Tonight, Justin McKinney has been a professional stand-up comedian for more than 20 years. Long before he was making people laugh on Conan and The Tonight Show and at clubs all over the country, he was just a kid growing up in Portsmouth and Kittery. Justin McKinney now lives just 20 minutes from where he grew up, and that sense of place still comes out in his stand-up. Your first time ever in Portsmouth, right? You check into your hotel at the traffic circle. <laughs> Call your wife. She's like, oh, how's, how's Portsmouth? How's the, how's the view from your hotel room? I'm looking at the biggest liquor store I've ever seen in my life. Oh, why don't you go over and get yourself a bottle or something? Because I'm looking at the most dangerous traffic circle I've ever seen in my life. You might think the life of a comedian would be one laugh after another. That has not been the case for Justin McKinney, who's had more than his fair share of setbacks and heartbreak. We sat down at his kitchen table to talk about the making of a stand-up comic, and you will not be surprised to learn that even as a kid, he was funny. As early as junior high, I remembered being in the library. That was the first was like people were like, oh, when did you want to be? No, think you wanted to be a comedian? There was a group of my friends in the library, and I'll never forget this, and then we were talking about what we want to do when we grow up, and I said, I wanted to be a comedian, and they all laughed. And I'm like, oh, that's easy. <laughs> you know. So that was my very first moment when I could remember what it felt like to get a laugh. Did you have any idea in a serious way when you were in, say, high school, what you wanted to do when you grew up? Well, when I got into high school, um, you know, it's a lot, how do you become a comedian? I didn't even know where to begin, right? So I thought I wanted to be a private investigator. Justin McKinney never became a private eye, but he did go to work for the York County Sheriff's Office, first as a jail guard, then as a deputy patrolling small towns. And I got hired at a really young age. You were 19 years I old. I was when 19, you got hired? yeah. I wasn't old enough to buy bullets. I'd have a, my partner buy me my bullets. So that's a line that sounds like something right out of a sitcom. <laughs> That was, the, that the was it. The deputy sheriff yeah. who's not old yeah. enough to buy bullets. <laughs> that was it. I wasn't <laughs> old enough. Yeah. In a job that was often anything but funny, McKinney used humor for his own protection. You know, going to calls and when I was on the road, you know, going to domestic disturbances, I used to, you know, crack jokes and stuff and try to diffuse the situation because I was all by myself. You know, a lot of times you didn't need a backup. There was two of us for 14 towns when I worked. So like I knew there was no one helping, it was just me. So you used kind of whatever you, you know, could use to make sure the situation didn't get out of hand. Did you enjoy that work? I, I, I liked the idea of um, helping people, right? Got into it and you, you know, you're like that person, if something was to happen, you would kind of save them. But it was, there was no doubt that, um, sometimes it'd be like, what did I get myself into? Like I could remember, um, you know, one time I get a call that, uh, you know, someone had barricaded themselves in the house and they said they're going to shoot the first cop that shows up. And I'm thinking, that's me. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, I'm, let me, like, I didn't want to rush to get there. You know what I mean? And I, I felt like picking up the radio and being like, yeah, I'd see if 16 can handle that. You know what I mean? I'm tied up. You know what I mean? Seeds were already being planted that would eventually yield material for stand-up comedy. I would always be thinking of all this funny stuff that was going on around me. Like we had a memo from the, 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 the chief one time that said, if you're not going to a call, park your car and shut up the engine to save gas. So I was at an intersection and this guy pulled up and he's like, you're gonna get that guy? You know, he just went right through the red light. And I'm like, I'm on E. You know what I mean? I, this is gonna get me in, through the rest of the shift. You know, he's not, I'm not for a red light. I, I can't waste the gas on a red light. You know? <laughs> Only major felonies will make me start yeah, exactly, up this car exactly. and put it in you gotta, drive. It's discretion. You got to use your discretion. <laughs> At what point did you say, "All right, I want to pursue comedy in a serious way"? So the first time I ever went on stage, it was down in Boston. I did three minutes. It was an open mic night, and I didn't tell anybody that I was doing because in case I bombed, I didn't want anyone to know. So I just went down by myself. It went surprisingly well. And uh, it got to the point where I started doing more and more. And then a buddy of mine told me about this person in New York. That person managed a comedy club in Manhattan. So in 1997, McKinney moved to New York City and began making connections, sharpening his material, honing his delivery. He was on his way as a stand-up comedian. You know, man, it's like, don't drink and drive. We have a tough, drunk driving law for your safety. You come in New Hampshire, the first thing you see is a liquor store <laughs> on every highway. And it's the size of an outlet mall. 
At this point, people having heard this story will say, okay, there have been bumps in the road, but still, it sounds as though Justin has led a pretty good life. And yet, when you were a kid, you had some really tough things that you had to overcome. When you were six years old, what happened to you? I was at a school fair with my mom. She was, uh, she was volunteering at the, the lawn fate, the school fair type thing, and she, uh, she collapsed. And um, she ended up getting rushed to the hospital, and um, that's where she passed away. So when I was six years old, she passed away. How did you deal with it? Well, I mean, if I had to guess, I mean, I would say humor, you know, was probably why I gravitated to that. Not only had that young boy lost his mother, but his father was an alcoholic who was for a time homeless. It was definitely, we thought he was going to die on the streets. So, you know, he was, he was living in a pay toilet in a parking garage in Portsmouth for a while, so. I mean, as if losing your mom when you were six years old weren't enough of a blow to then have your dad be homeless. This was not a, a Norman Rockwell childhood for you. No, and I was always, you know, in a, as a kid, I was always worried that my dad was going to embarrass me, right? Like, I was in junior high, and he got mad at the bank in downtown Kittery. So he went down to the bank, and he threw a brick through the window in broad daylight. Like, and my friend Alan lived across the street, calls me up. He goes, is your dad home? And I'm like, uh, why? And I knew he wasn't because I saw him running out the, bed, the door and he wasn't happy. He goes, I think I just saw him throw a brick through the bank window in his underwear. And I was just like, um, he said he has some errands to run. After spending his childhood hoping that his dad wouldn't do something that would embarrass him, Justin is now proud of his father, who has been sober for more than a decade. And my dad's my biggest fan. You know, he's like, if you look at it, the wall in his apartment is all like clippings and cut out pictures of me and stuff, so. There are a lot of kids who wouldn't have gotten through those two experiences and they would have been, you know, really, really harmed in a way that would have affected them for the rest of their lives. Why do you think you were able to, to get through them and, and, and pursue the things you wanted to pursue and make something of yourself? I don't know. I did always think that my mom was kind of watching me when I was little, and that definitely got me through those years. Like, you know, when she collapsed, and I can't help, especially being a parent now, thinking that she was thinking, um, you know, what's going to happen to my kids? You know, that's probably the worry that goes through parents' minds, you know what I mean? That you're worried about your kids, and to know that... She, um, <sighs> Sorry. To know that she didn't have to worry about me, you know what I mean? A little bit of that, probably. Yeah. You know, making wanting her to be proud and, you know. It's quite a story, and it doesn't end there. We'll have more of our conversation with Justin McKinney tomorrow. He'll talk about how he broke into stand-up, how he made and lost a small fortune early in his career, and why he's made sacrifices in his career so that he could live near his hometown. By the way, if you'd like to see Justin McKinney perform, he'll be at Stone Mountain Arts Center in Brownfield on January 24th at the Camden Opera House on the 31st and at City Theatre in Biddeford on February 1st.